welcome to Math Talk. I'm your host, Brian Heisler, and today I want to show you a little bit of the tricks and tools you can use with the calculator that's available on the math section of the GED. So some of the stuff I'm going to talk about is, is simple, simple functions, but I also want to go into some of the more elaborate ones as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Obviously, you know you have your plus, your minus, your times, and your divide. You also have a negative sign in your calculator, which is different than the minus sign seen here. The negative sign is when you want to make a number negative. The minus sign is when you want to do subtraction. Another feature you have is you can square a number. And the way you do that is, let's say I want to take the number 5 and I want to square it. There's a button here that says x to the second power. I hit that and I hit enter and my number is squared. I could also raise a number to a higher power, like the third, the fourth, the fifth, etc. The way that happens is, I type in my number, I hit this, what's called a caret right here, looks like an up arrow, and it brings me to an exponent, and then I just type in whatever exponent I want. Let's say it's the seventh power. I hit enter, and there's my answer. Another thing I can do is I can take the square root of a number. That, you can find the square root key in green, above the x squared button. Whenever the, the stuff is in green, you want to make sure you push the second key first. That'll get you all the green info. So I push second, square root, and I type in the number I want to take the square root of, like 144. I hit enter. Now it's important to keep in mind that sometimes you'll get a number, like let's say you type in the square root of 150. Sometimes you'll get an answer that looks like this. What that means is it's not a perfect square, and you get an answer that just has a radical as part of your answer. Um, so one of the things I want to talk about with this is you can change the format of this number if you want to. You can change it to a decimal or etc. The way that works is you push this arrow button in white, the left-right arrow. Whenever you do that, it'll change your value to a decimal and back to its exact form. So you can also do this with numbers for like fractions to decimals, etc. So let's say I have the number 1.75. Hit enter. That's the value. Let's say I want to see what it looks like as a fraction. I push this arrow button and it turns into a fraction. If you notice though, the numerator is bigger than the denominator. What that means is it's an improper fraction. Well, on this calculator, there's a way to change improper fractions to mixed numbers. If you look above this times 10 to the n, in green, there's little buttons that say n over d and then u n over d. What that means is it takes an improper fraction and turns it into a mixed number and vice versa. So I would hit the second key, and then I would hit the times 10, and you see it says change the fraction to an improper to a mixed number and I hit enter and it turns it into one and three fourths. If I wanted to go back I can do the same thing. Hit the second key and then enter. If I wanted to go back to the decimal form I just go back to my arrow key here. You can go back and forth as many times as you want to. So it's a, it's a nice little feature to use if your answers are all in decimal or answers are all in fraction or there's mixed numbers. You can always change the format of your number. Another thing you can do is you can use scientific notation. I know there's questions to ask about scientific notation, um, which is the stuff that involves like times 10 to the fifth power, times 10 to the negative 12th, etc. Well, there's a way to represent that on your calculator. So let's say you have a number like 1, 4, 5 with a whole bunch of zeros at the end of it like that. And you want to know what it, how it's represented in scientific notation. If I hit enter, it'll give it to me in scientific notation. 1.45 times 10 to the 10th. Well, let's say you want to go from this scientific notation to the expanded form. Well, in order to do that, you have to change the mode of your calculator. You have to put it in scientific mode. The way you do that is you hit the mode button and you scroll down to SCI. So go down and then over and then you hit enter to select it. Now to get out of this screen you just hit clear. So let's say I have a number like 1.23 times 10 to the, I don't know, the fourth. 
If I hit enter, it'll show me that value. But if I hit this arrow change key, it'll show me the actual value of that expanded over here. 1, 2, 3, 0, 0. It's the same thing as 1.23 times 10 to the fourth. So if you ever wanted to see what an expanded notation looks like, this is what it is. Now it's important to remember that you have to go back and change your mode back to the normal mode for other problems. Because scientific mode is really only used for scientific notation problems. Another thing you can do with the calculator is changing percents to decimals and decimals to percents, etc. So let's say I had a decimal, they gave me the decimal 0.23. And I wanted to know what that was as a percent. The way I can do that is, I can, in my green buttons here, I can see that there's an arrow to the percent sign, which means it's going to change that number to a percent. So I hit the second key, and then percent, and I hit enter. And it tells me that 0 0.23 is 23%. If I want to go back, just use this arrow key left and right, and it turns it to a fraction for me, turns it back to a decimal for me, and we already know the percent. So this little arrow key left and right is really good. It'll show you the different formats of the number and the ways in which it can be represented. So these are some of the nice little features about the calculator that I hope will come in handy when you're trying to figure out answers and the way that numbers are represented for either your answer choice or the problems you're given. Good luck. Your education will add up when you visit us at GEDS.com. For future tips and videos, be sure to subscribe and follow.